Tonight, I am super excited. And, and um, we have here today, we have one of our very own um, juniors who's going to come and give the message. If you don't know her, her name is Jaden Nelson. And she has um, something that God has put on her heart that I'm so excited for her to come on up here and share with you. Why don't you come up, Jaden? You're right. Uh, Check your mic. Are you are you live right now? Um, Can we hear you? Let's see. We are now. Real talk. All right. <laughs> real talk. We're live. All right. Well, let's pray for Jaden. Uh, Lord, we thank you so much that um, uh, you are a great God. And I mean, real talk, Lord, you are true. You are good. Um, you are so loving. And we know, Lord, that you will be with Jaden and you'll be with us as we hear the stuff that you put on her heart to share. Uh, Lord, we do pray that you would um, just guide this time, open our ears, open our hearts, open our minds to what she has to say. We love you, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Okay, so first I'm going to grab my box, if that's okay. <laughs> Don't worry, it makes sense later. share a little bit about myself, including a few hobbies. Um, first, I enjoy Netflix binging. <laughs> if you don't know what Netflix binging is, you need to look it up, try it, and stop living a deprived life. Um, <laughs> so basically, the definition is um, watching an entire television series, its add-ons, spin-off shows, which can take months, honestly, <laughs> in the almost span of 24 hours. Now, don't ask me the physics on that, because I <laughs> but you sit down and you're like, wow, I have to be at practice at 6. But I can fit this 45-minute episode into the next 15 minutes. <laughs> um, so a second thing about me, and probably the best thing about me, is that I am completely capable of eating an entire Ben and Jerry's in one sitting. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I have a passion for ice cream. <laughs> I don't know where really it goes. Jesus, family, Dairy Queen Blizzards. So if you, anyone want to hit me up, I'll this one. <laughs> okay, but on a more serious note, I have a passion for the orphans of Burma and their difficulties. Today I'm here to raise awareness about what they're going through. I'm also going to be talking about some real life applications and lessons we can take from the horrible events and tough situations that have been unfolding and still are occurring in Burma. I heard about the orphan's plight from my grandmother, who's a missionary and has been closely affiliated with an organization dedicated to helping these orphans. And I just felt God really laying it on my heart to speak and share about what's currently going on in Burma with these kids. So, situation. Since independence in 1948, Myanmar, um, the people who live there call it Burma, but they changed the name recently. It's been one of the longest ongoing civil wars that to this day remains not completely resolved. The country has been under military control under several guises from 1962 to 2010. And because of that, it's become one of the least developed nations in the world. So I have a map. So Myanmar, Burma is right there. Ooh, I just got this, so. <laughs> so there's Bangladesh, is right next to the left, India, and then China's up there. So I don't know if that gives you an idea of like where it is. So more than 500,000 people have been killed in Burma in the last 30 years. More than 3,300 villages have been burned to the ground by Burmese military. Thousands of children have lost parents from brutal attacks by Burmese soldiers. And about one million Burmese refugees have fled across the border to Thailand. Um, but Thailand refugee camps aren't even safe. They weren't safe. Um, Burmese soldiers often cross the shallow river separating Myanmar and Thailand to poison the water supply, kill, and kidnap refugees who they sometimes use as human minesweepers. <laughs> the Thai generals who ruled the area worked hand in hand with Burma's ruling military junta regime and grew rich through the illegal drug trade that profited them both. 
The genocide occurring in Myanmar was said to be both an ethnic cleansing and a reaction to pro-democracy. They're a very oppressive government, if you can call it a government. Um, but yeah, the killing campaign led against the Burmese people has also appeared to have a specifically anti-Christian agenda. When the head of a monastery of Buddhist monks asked a soldier if they should leave a conflict area, the soldier replied, no. We are not going to harm the Buddhists, we are only against the Christians. One heavily targeted Burmese minority group is the current people of Burma. Um, they've been historically Christian. I think today there's about 40% of current people who are Christian. Um, and a Burmese official in 2010 publicly stated, soon there will be no Christians in this nation. You will only be able to see a current person in a picture in a museum. But heartening news was received from Myanmar in 2010 when the pro-democracy leader Aung San Suu Kyi was released from the house arrest she was under by the military-controlled government. Kyi has begun to initiate a series of political reforms, but the government's ability and willingness to protect its people is questioned in the face of the ever-growing humanitarian crises and reoccurring violence. Children of Burma have been exploited, abused, neglected, and war ravaged. Most orphans' parents were killed by the oppressive military regime for being Christian. And that's where my passion is, for these orphans who are the persecuted church. We're very blessed here in America. Um, we're not being hunted down and persecuted for our beliefs. We're not being put to death for our faith. We don't have value nutrition like that kid in there. Watching videos like that and hearing about what's actually going on in the world, they seem depressing and sometimes pointless. But there are things we can take and learn from what our Christian brothers and sisters are going through. Something that I'm reminded of when I'm learning about a hard world situation is to not take for granted what we have here. One way we're extremely blessed here in America is our freedom of religion and our freedom of press. We're not restricted in what we print. We have the right to circulate whatever we want without um, censorship by the government. And this means we have the right to print Bibles. The people of Burma don't enjoy these same luxuries. There, the government is so oppressive, you have to smuggle Bibles across the border to read. And what do we have here? Like, 12 lying on the shelf outside this room? Like, Bible bookstores? Libraries we can go to? What, at the touch of our fingertips? Bible apps, we get like verse apps, those are fun, how it goes. And the fact that Burma has none of these luxuries, and that we don't, isn't a guilt trip. But it's a great reminder of how we should never lose our appreciation for the Bible. It's worth taking that extra 10 minutes when you get up or before bed to get into God's word. One of my favorite Christian role models, Sadie Robertson, said, how can we blame God for not answering us if we never open up his word? So the next thing I want to talk about, um, the next thing that hit me when I was hearing about what was going on in Burma was the fact of how few people actually knew what was going on. Like, they don't circulate it in the media very much. But as I thought about it more, I realized how so few people actually know what's going on around the world. Um, the church is being persecuted not only in Burma, but we have Christian brothers and sisters being persecuted in China, Middle East, North Korea, and it doesn't stop there. You can go to a website called Open Doors where there's a list of the top 50 countries where it's hardest to be a Christian. We need to get out of our boxes and see what's going on in the world. Oftentimes it can be really comfortable to just stay inside your own little box of where you live, where you go to church, and where you have your community and your bubble. And I'm guilty of this too. But when you're living inside your box. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when you're living inside your box, your own little world, you're completely oblivious to what's going on outside of your box. You put up blinders, most times unintentionally, but that shields you from the knowledge of the pain and suffering that's going on in our world. And the box is really comfortable. I'm not going to lie. You don't have to struggle over the genocide that occurred in Rwanda in the box. You don't have to struggle over how sinful our world really is in your box. 
But there are people who don't get the luxury of living in a box. There are people who are living horrors that you don't even want to think about. There are kids in Burma who've seen their parents killed right in front of them. As Christians, we can't just turn our heads away like the priest and the Levite in the parable of the Good Samaritan. If one part of the body of Christ suffers, we all suffer with them. 1 Corinthians 12.26 says, If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. We are all one under the bloodshed by Jesus Christ. It is our job as Christians to stay informed and educated about what's going on around our world. People knowing what is happening is the first step in the right direction of taking action that will lead to change. A way you guys can get involved in this is to continue to raise awareness for the Burma orphans. You can also donate directly to the cause by mailing donations to Worldwide Impact Now or Vision Beyond Borders. And you can also go onto their online sites where you can donate directly online. But the biggest way that you guys can support the Orphan Burma, um, the, the Orphans of Burma, is through prayer. Prayer is so powerful. Prayer changes lives. And I want to challenge you guys to get out of your box this next year. Whether that is reading up on what's going right on right now in China, North Korea, Burma, or deciding to take that step and to go on one of the mission trips that are offered here at Constance. Getting out of your box may seem scary, but it is so worth it. When you're aware of the atrocities going on in the world, you're also made aware of how God is moving in the world. You're made aware of how you can serve and be a blessing to others. You're made aware of how you can be the change and make an impact on a world that so sorely needs love, compassion, and selflessness. The last thing I want to talk about today is what it means to be truly all in for Jesus. We are so comfortable. We are so content and complacent here in our daily lives. As I talked about earlier, we're content in our boxes. You wake up in the morning and you have school and tests, and right after school you have practice for whatever sport you're in, and after that you have homework and you have to eat with your family, and you have to stay updated with all your friends on social media and plan your time so you can get the optimal amount of studying in while also squeezing in that half hour Netflix episode of the show you're watching. <laughs> and then you're done. And you wake up and you do it all over again. And you don't realize it. But the fast-paced, monotonous routine of your life rearranges your values of what's important and what you'll just finish tomorrow. It's not that you're actively ignoring God and purposely placing Him below other things. It's the fact that life happens. A day goes by, and a week goes by, and a month goes by, and you're just surviving, trying to get through the week. Sometimes we get so caught up in our busyness and our own little drama and little lives that we forget what is truly important. We unknowingly turn the focus from Jesus onto several different things, ourselves, school, the issues we think are so terrible, but when put in the light of eternity, don't really matter that much at all. In Burma, the reason that most of the kids are orphans is because their parents understood what was really important in life. They were all in for Jesus. When faced with adversity, they didn't deny God. They gave their lives for their faith. They sacrificed everything. I just want to put our lives in perspective. We don't have to get so worked up about the problems and the issues in our life that seem overwhelming, like school, drama, our own insecurities, because we have eternity with Christ. The parents of these orphans understood what they had in Jesus. That didn't make their lives easy, though. Life can be really hard. We all know it. It can get seriously tough. But God doesn't promise us a perfect life. In Hebrews chapter 11, it lists all these heroes of the faith and the crazy awesome things they did through Christ. And at the end of the chapter, it says, these were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. Yet the verse goes on to say, but God has something better in mind for us, that he's preparing a place better for us. Our victory isn't here. 
It's in heaven with Christ, where we get to be in the presence of the all-powerful, sovereign, maker of the universe, whose love for us never fails. I want to challenge you guys to make God a priority, and to take time this week to think a little bit about how much you're blessed, how much we're all blessed. To just give God everything you're struggling with, your insecurities, stress, busyness, the difficult situations you're in, and just take time to revel in what God has done for you through Jesus Christ. So wrapping up, if you guys don't remember anything from this, I want you to take away these three things. One, get into the Word. Just open up your Bible, even if it's for like three minutes a day, I promise you it will change your life. Two, don't be afraid to get out of your box and get educated and involved with what's going on in the world and with the persecuted church. And if you feel called to it, the orphans of Burma. And three, be all in for Jesus. Cast your worries, struggles, and inhibitions on him and rest in his promises. Thanks, guys. I'm going to close up right now. Dear Jesus, thank you for this time that we could all come together here and just hear about your children who are suffering in other parts of the world. I just pray that you will open our eyes and soften our hearts to what's going on and just help us understand how blessed we are here and how we can be a blessing to others. Um, I just pray that going as we leave this church, that we are all in for you not just one day when a speaker speaks, but every day of our lives. In your name, amen.